we'll just cover basic graphs. Uh, mostly, all, uh, we'll be covering only until the shortest path networks. And uh, we have a session on advanced graph tomorrow by Ajay Samani. Uh, representation is how would you represent graph? Graph is an abstract concept, so that is, it does not have a geometric representation. You just you, that is, you can draw a graph in any any way. So. Uh, how do you represent graph to a computer? In a computer, you can use adjacency list, adjacency matrix, or a combination or your own pseudo representation. Like if it's a tree, I could probably represent root, comma, child list, or something like that. So, right, so uh, adjacency list, that is, uh, we had a session on STL. How we normally represent adjacency list is by a list int or a vector int. Typically, we use vector int because. Uh, the because all of us are more familiar with vector than list in but you can also use list int or list whatever data type to represent a graph uh, so uh, agency list okay first is first one is agency matrix agency matrix is a v cross v matrix uh, where if, I, if you want to compute the cost of an edge in o1 i just look at like if i want to compute what is the distance between let's say that i am working with a graph which is a distance graph uh, of cities in a country then uh, I want to find what is the cost of what is the length of the road between city A to city B I could just look up the element A B look up the B element in row A in this agency matrix that is uh, element I comma J would be the distance from I to J length of the edge from I to J uh, it works for if it's under if it's under if it's undirected it would be uh, symmetrical if it's directed it would not be and uh, but the negative point is it uses theta and squared memory where n is the number of vertices uh, we are assuming that you know exponentiation so if you want to find what is the length of all paths of length i the number of paths of length i in a in a given graph you can use adjacency matrix and and power function to find it in a recent in a very efficient manner excellent adjacency list is another way of representing it is much, it's much more space efficient but the query that I said earlier would not work here that is I cannot efficiently comp efficiently find whether there exists an edge A comma B maybe I could use hashing or something but what I mean is just by using adjacency list what I could do is I could just go and search all elements in the adjacency list of A and check whether B, B, is a, B exists or not and uh, so, for example, you will encounter problems in which V will be, uh, number of vertices would be around uh, 1E5 and number of edges would be around 5E5. So, in such problems, you will be using adjacency list because adjacency matrix would obviously uh, go beyond memory. It uses theta M memory, where M is the number of edges. Because for each edge, you either store one, one node in the linked list or you store two nodes depending on whether it's the director or undirected. So uh, there is a combination that is if the graph type is special you might sometimes benefit by using a combination idea combination of adjacency matrix and adjacency list like if the graph is bipartite you use something called as a bi adjacency matrix a bipartite graph is a graph in which every node can be that is every node can be colored every the, I can make an assignment of white and black to every node such that if an edge connects two nodes, it connect, uh, the colors of those two will be different. So let's just assume that I put all my white nodes on the left and black nodes on the right. Uh, all the edges would be from here to here. There would not be an edge like this because then the graph would not be bipartite. Because there's a triangle here. The, uh, pro how to check whether a graph is bipartite is? Of course, using one of the graph traversal methods, but a uh, theorem is if a graph contains an odd cycle, it is not bipartite. Okay, so uh, this is a bipartite graph. So if I use adjacency matrix, I would have to use 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7 cross 7 matrix. And if I use adjacency list, I'd be using uh, theta A memory. But just for bipartite graphs, you can have an L cross R matrix where uh, uh, L represents that is this will be left 1 left 0 left 1 left 2 this would be right 0 right 1 right 2 right 3 so I can have a matrix M bracket I can have a I can represent my graph as G 3 4 and this would this gives me I will be able to reconstruct the graph just based on what is given here so this is just a that it is just a, an efficient representation 
and also you might sometimes need the combination a uh, combination of both these representations to work properly like uh, so using in Maxwell like applications your DFS and BFS will work faster on, in on adjacency on adjacency lists and your uh, that is to uh, keep track of your capacities and flows you might have to use an agency matrix so uh, that is this is very much problem dependent and uh, as I said also for trees you can give a node child list or in fact there is a representation which Unix uses for directory structure which is sibling representation that is uh, each child will will have a left pointer which points to its left sibling uh, a parent pointer and a left pointer which points to its left sibling Alright, so we look at a very basic problem now. Uh, you are given an M cross in matrix containing that is where each cell could either be a dot, which means it's a free cell, a hash, which means it's a block cell. You start at cell which is marked S and you end at cell which is marked T. Now the question is, can you reach from S to T moving horizontally or vertically? To moving to horizontally or vertically adjacent positions. That is the movements that you make are to orthogonally situated cells and can you move from S to T. We are given a matrix, we have M cross N cells, so a very basic, this is a, like, you'd be lucky if you have a problem like this or even a, <laughs> even something which is like maybe a little harder than this in your regional, that would probably be the easiest problem of your regional. So uh, the idea is you can represent each cell as a node in the graph and uh, each cell would have four, at most four edges going out of it, which is for the four orthogonally adjacent cells, then do uh, okay. Go to the next slide. Do a traversal from source and check whether you can reach sync. So that is, you are trying to search in a graph. For searching in a graph, there are two very basic procedures: BFS, depth first search, and depth first search. Uh, there are two very basic procedures: depth first search and depth first search. So. I'll first discuss breadth first search, which is an iterative procedure in which the, uh, so I, I will I'll, we'll now discuss breadth first search. So uh, first thing is identifying the state, that is what all should be, should be represented in the graph, that is what does a node represent in a graph. In this identifying the state was easy, the state was just a cell in my matrix. But sometimes the state is not like this, like uh, for example, a state could be something like, uh, uh, the position that I am in and the number of shots that I have fired. Like if I was solving a problem in which I had to, that is a, a, a problem in which a state is not really a physical quantity. Like in this, you can have a physical quantity mapped to a node in the graph. But there are, that is, you might have encountered or you will encounter problems in which the state will be something completely abstract like the number of cells, number of blocked cells that I have moved until now, comma my present position. That is, a state can, a state is really how you want to define the graph. And so the key idea in solving anything using a, a basic graph search technique is identify the state, then representing the problem as a graph problem. Identify the edges, what is the, like, if there is a relation which, ho which keeps three things all together, of course, we'll have to think of another formulation because graph an edge only connects two things. Uh, I think it's called a hypergraph if it's if an edge connects multiple graphs. But uh, the idea is you must uh, represent the problem as a graph problem, and then you must reduce it to a standard algorithm in graph. So uh, a pseudo code for BFS would be uh, enqueue the uh, you have you use a queue data structure, you enqueue the root node. In, in our case, that would be NQS. And then I go uh, go through this procedure. This is, a loop, this is a loop, which is like, that is, this is a do and repeat from. So uh, I I just dequeue the top node from the queue. That is, the, invent, I, the loop step I follow is I dequeue the top node, check if this is what I'm searching for. If yes, break. Else, for every adjacent node which has not yet been visited, push it onto the queue, set it as visited and then if queue is empty and if I am not found return not possible, else uh, go back to step 2. So uh, this is a pseudo code for BFS, so I will write, I will quickly write a code for that matrix problem just for those who have not ever coded. Uh, I am assuming that graph is given in adjacency list form which is uh, vector int 
वेक्टर वेक्टर इंट वेक्टर इंट एजेंसी एस आर एस सी गिवस वेर रिसोर्स is located the row at which s is located and uh, column at which s is located so uh, so my q has to be a, has to ha have two things so i'd use a q pair intent like you can define pis and uh, my initial matrix is cal m bracket bracket q dot push is equal to q dot front dot second seen is an uh, boolean array which defines whether i've seen the uh, element so for now uh, what you, what i'm trying to show here is that although it is orthogonally adjacent you need not use four for that is you need not use four conditions you can define an array int dr is equal to okay so uh, the idea of traversing is that uh, for i'll just write the key key part because of course you all can write q dot push and q dot uh, the key part is that for let's say i call it as d that is to traverse through every orthogonally adjacent element and it could also not just be orthogonal it could just be all diagonally adjacent could also be included so in which case this would be a, a, a little bigger vector so uh, d is equal to 0 d less than 4 d plus 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 assume i'm i'm at prpc in nr equal to pr plus now just check the bounds for nr comma nc and uh, go forward so the idea is inside instead of writing four loops that is q dot push uh, row minus 1 comma column row plus 1 comma column row comma column minus 1 row comma column plus 1 of course after checking the bounds you can write this and this would reduce the code length considerably so uh, the idea is just to idea of writing that was to just show this properties of bfs at any point the uh, distance of the element at the back of the queue that is the element that was just inserted and the distance of the element at the front of the queue would not exceed 1 uh, is anyone can is this this look non that is uh, is anyone not clear with this idea that is for example if i am on a graph like this that is one thing that is if i am at this node i would be pushing this node next and after that i would be pushing something so my queue now just has this and if it has another child if it has another child i'll next be pushing this node so what i'm saying is that the present node that i am i am processing and the uh the last node that has just been inserted the distance would be less than equal to 1 i am working with uh, unweighted graphs please note that the graphs are unweighted so when i mean distance i just means then i just mean the number of edges covering number of edges between these two so uh yeah uh this is the property of bfs now uh, a question you could we, okay uh, now another question is given a tree you are required to find a root which minimizes the maximum depth and which maximizes the maximum depth for example if my tree is like this this root actually minimizes the maximum depth the maximum depth is now 1 and if i make this or this as a root it maximizes the maximum depth so question is given a tree minimize the maximum depth that is find the root output a root if there are multiple output any one or output the like smallest or output any one uh, which minimizes the maximum depth and which maximizes the maximum depth Le the longest shortest path that is you find dij for every i, I comma j that is you where d is the number of edges between i and j and the max of dij for every i comma j is what is called as the diameter so uh, his solution is find diameter of the graph there is a fairly easy greedy procedure to find diameter of the graph which is in fact a common exercise question so i would say you solve that so in which so if you use diameter of the graph we know that it is the maximum so we can root it at one of the end points of the diameter of the graph that is what you saying as your solution all right okay how to find the diameter is a greedy procedure in which you start from any arbitrary node and uh, you do a bfs and and you store the last node that you visited in the dfs uh, in the bfs now the last node that you visited you would have visited in the bfs would be an n node like this and now compute another that is start run another bfs with this as the source node and find the last node which which has been visited after this so that is your bfs procedure should return what the last